So Fontaine is beating. Goodbye. Tell them I'm come where I can reach you. Beating Ryan at his own game, apparently. Which is funny. No, go make this harder than it needs to be. Where is he? Judah, how will drop? Wow, seriously. your loot. Give me all your loot. Um, okay. Well, this is certainly slow since I'm playing on hard difficulty and given my particular playstyle. Let's hack this. And as we're moving through these spaces, we can think about... Oh, what does that say? We are entitled to the sweat of our own brow. That's nice. We can think about... The level design, which is... I mean, the gameplay is fairly linear, although we did backtrack a bit, and then a new door opened up, and now we're going into a new area from a door that we couldn't go into before. Grenades. Can I hit him from here? Damn it. Darling, it's me. Great. So we just let them kill each other for a while, and let me re-start the recording. I don't know why it lags. Okay, that's better. Let's see, what do we have now? He's still alive. Wow, why? Okay, I just enraged the big daddy. And so I follow the mob. Ah, Nothing's happening. Is he killing them or not? Okay, he's killing something. Whoa. Why did the big daddy not kill her? He's not... oh man... I don't know. Anyway, we're... through here... Oh. I saw one of these smugglers having a game of catching on the docks today. And this surprised me because his hands were crippled during the war. He was unloading the barge the other day when he was beaten from this sea slug. He woke up the next morning and he found he could move his fingers for the first time in years. I asked him if he still had that sea slug. As luck would have it, <laughs> he did. <laughs> Sad little sister. That's throwing a tantrum. It's quite cute, actually. Have taken you away and said 
are needed to save Rapture. Who needs a child to save a city? But I, I see these little girls crawling out of these beds, and I only wonder if you might one day crawl out of these beds and find oh my God. this road. We look for you, but if you find this, come to us and the fighting McDonald's in room number seven. The call to our room is seven five three three. We miss you, our darling child. So in the same voice tape, they tell you about a bit about the story, like little girls disappearing, and it also gives you a code for a locked room, which is pretty clever. Like they're doing two things at once. Can I? Reach that? I can't. I really want to hack that thing. Whoa. I'm trying to jump up, man. Uh, I wanna. What should I do about that? Okay, so I can't hack it. And I can't believe how many bullets that took. And this Fontaine fellow is somebody to watch. Once he was just a menace to be convicted and hung. But he always manages to be where the evidence isn't. He's the most dangerous type of hoodlum. The kind with vision. In case you missed it the first few times, there's a conflict between Fontaine and Ryan. And staircases and cameras. I guess one of the impressive things about this game is that almost every Every space is a puzzle. Like if you try and think, there weren't any real, you know, dead areas, like you know, like long corridors or empty rooms where nothing happened. Well, up to now anyway. We might find some later on. But up to now, almost every single space, or every little bit. The research camera looks just like one you'd see topside. According to this magazine article I scrounged up. It can also analyze genetic information, parse biological structures, and lots of other five dollar words. Now almost every, every area serves some sort of gameplay purpose. So it's very efficient in that way and it also doesn't waste the player's time, you know, walking around dead spaces, although you know, having said that... Oh, this area. You know, having said that, sometimes... For example, in um, Deus Ex Human Revolution... You know, some of the areas there... Were used entirely for, for narrative. And that's alright.
But in this game, most of the storytelling is integrated with... ...is integrated into the game. Oh, wow. Integrated into the game. Oh my god, that failed so bad. That failed so bad. I knew that would happen too. Because that thing's there, and once I attack this, this will attack the turret as well. And then I just get completely owned by the splash damage. I, am I missing? I'm sure I'm hitting those things when I shot them. I, uh, I'm gonna watch these videos afterwards. And then I'm gonna see just how badly I'm failing. I swear I'm, I'm hitting them. With the shock. But apparently I'm not. Still something else. Was it an enemy? Did the turrets deal with them? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. It's still shooting. Huh. Well, at least they give you first aid kits. Let's see, what's up here? Corpse, nothing useful. Bandages, don't need those. I need that. Uh, what was that? I don't need that. I don't need that. Some enemies trying to come in. Sneak in from behind. Little do they know that they have to face a turret. Where are the guns? Ah, oh, there was some... Pistol, pistol. Great. So the arrangement of this space creates, I guess, crossfire areas. Oh, I didn't want to do that. So there was a turret here. There was a turret there, that was a more dangerous turret. I guess we could have came here. And I, I don't know if there's any other way to play that out successfully. I used the shock, as you saw, to uh, temporarily, temporarily disable the turrets while I ran up and hacked them. I could have destroyed them using heavy weapons, but what happened then is I would be using up ammunition and 
Uh, where am I going next? I would be using up ammunition. And I wouldn't get the bonus for hacking, like the health bonus for hacking things. So you've noticed by now that I had pretty much everything. Hanging now, is it? That's what we've come to now. Look, I don't make the laws here. I just enforce them. But I didn't come to rapture to string men up for running contraband. If Ryan and his crew have their law, then they can have my badge. So Ryan's resorting to the death penalty. I think I said this earlier, right? I mean, I was saying that Ryan eventually becomes the very thing that he he hates and the very thing that he came down here to escape from. Like, to escape government and authority and people in power telling him what to do. And then when he becomes the guy in power, he does pretty much the same thing, if not worse. And uh, it's, I mean, the game itself is a very intelligent critique of libertarianism. The idea that, you know, you don't need any rules, people are smart enough to, to work things out by themselves. But whenever you have people, and here we have Fontaine as the guy who 